Alright, so everyone, I want to show you a little game called Foxy Land 2. But first, while I set the groundwork, this is the original Foxy Land you're seeing on screen right now. Or rather, it's a demo of the original Foxy Land. Now, the original Foxy Land, what you're seeing here, uses entirely pre made assets. And this didn't go unnoticed by people, as it usually doesn't. But it's still a good game. Pre-made assets do not autom automatically make a game bad. I'm fairly certain you know that, but it bears repeating. This game uses pre-made assets, but it's still a good game. But it is largely intended for mobile users. And it is very important that you see this game for context, because although Foxy Land 2 is the main reason we're here, this is what spawned Foxy Land 2. And this is a good game in its own right, but there are things wrong with it that were not only addressed by Foxy Land 2, but Foxy Land 2 is just leagues ahead in several other ways. So the original Foxy Land is simple enough. You jump, you jump on enemies, you pull switches by walking into them, you avoid traps, and that's about it. You run, jump, jump on enemies' heads, avoid traps, pull levers. Sometimes you climb stairs. And it's about as simple as a 2D platformer can possibly get. Hold on, this is the tough level in the demo. But I think we've got it. We just need to jump on the... Alright, see, so what happened there is I got stuck in the spikes like an idiot. But we can restart right from the beginning of the level, and all of the levels in this game and its sequel are short, so that's no big deal. Now this time, let's tone down my hubris, and I think we'll be fine. But this game controls tight, even if it uses pre-made assets and isn't terribly ambitious. It's not going to bring back anyone's memories of the, uh, quote, golden age of 2D platformers, but it is functional for the most part, and the, the controls are good. So, you know, what more do you want? Alright, that's the original Foxy Land, the demo for it, anyway. Now, let's get on to Foxy Land 2. Alright, this is my completed file of Foxy Land 2, I've already beaten it, but let's go through the levels in order up until the boss anyway. The level's starting with the second one. So, this game uh, is just better in every conceivable fashion than the original. First of all, the graphics are all original. All the graphics, all the animations, everything completely originally done, and it shows. The world map is a new addition, and it looks gorgeous. I like the way the water wobbles when you move across the world map. The HUD in the upper left is absolutely gorgeous. Everything has such a consistent woodsy theme to it. And now there is wall jumping. Very precise, very fluid, and very easy to use wall jumping. The controls in this game are incredibly tight. Some of the tightest in any 2D platformer, and I know people make such a big deal about tight controls. Personally, I know that loose controls are usually intentional, so it doesn't bother me when a game doesn't have tight controls, but... The controls in this game are flawless. If you make a mistake in this game, it's because you pressed a button at the wrong time. It's not because the controls made a boo-boo on you. And I love how this game eases you into it. Like I said, in the original Foxy Land, which you just saw, the levels are short in this game and its prequel. And they stay short the entire time. But the first five or so levels give you the impression this is going to be an easy game. But it's not. What the first five or so levels do, actually, is something that a lot of games don't do, and that is set up a difficulty curve. The first levels are Baby's first 2D platformer easy, and then by the end of the game, it graduates to, I hope you've beaten the hardest Super Nintendo platformers. I have found Super Ghouls and Ghosts a significantly easier experience to conquer than this game, especially in this game's later stages. But Super Ghouls and Ghosts mostly has a consistent difficulty. Look at how they introduce the ability to slide down the wall. I really like that. Another thing you can do in this game, in addition to wall jumping and wall sliding, is we can grab berries and throw them at enemies. We can also jump on enemies, but some enemies will have spikes on their heads that prevent them from being jumped on later, so those berries will be important. 
And you may be looking at this game and saying, well, it looks cute, but aren't there a lot of games that are trying to be retro platformers right now? What's special about this one? And well, I think this one captures actually being a retro platformer a lot better than most retro-inspired platformers. See, something that retro platformers were is ball-bustingly difficult. And not in the way that really difficult games nowadays try to be difficult. They were ball-bustingly difficult in annoying ways. Modern games are difficult in ways that try to play on a player's skill, you know? They try to make the player feel rewarded, like they're overcoming the game. But a lot of the obstacles, enemy placement, and platforming in Foxy Land 2 is just deliberately annoying. And this is not at all accidental. Like, if you watch their trailer, they advertise that the game has annoying enemy placement. That's in the trailer. They add in new enemy types that are indistinguishable from background scenery and exist solely for you to accidentally walk into them because you think they're background scenery. There's a lot of flying enemies over precarious platforms that you barely have the resources to deal with. And when the game design in later stages isn't aggressively annoying, the archaic, uh, the archaic mechanics that is used outside of the general game design, that's aggressively annoying. There's a live system, and you can only continue from every third or fourth stage where there's a clear checkpoint, sort of like in Mario. Now, thankfully, when you lose all your lives, you don't have to start the whole game over. But when you lose all your lives, you do have to question what the hell happened with the hit detection there. As I was saying, when you do lose all your lives, you do have to start from the last checkpoint, which could have been three or four really difficult stages ago. And that turns off a lot of people. And it would have turned me off, too, if it wasn't transparently obvious what the game was trying to be. That death was all on me. That was entirely my bad. This game is just, like, it feels, from beginning to end, the six to seven hours it took my unskilled ass to beat this game that usually probably takes people two to four hours to beat. The six to seven hours I played this game, it felt exactly like I was playing an old Super Nintendo game. And that's a feeling a lot of retro games try and fail to capture. And some people could and have argued that it's a good thing that they only capture the look of retro games and not the unfairness. But, you know, it's not really genuine, I think, if the unfairness isn't there. A lot of people have these rose-tinted glasses on when they look toward retro games, but a lot of retro games were really obnoxiously unfair especially 2D platformers. They would start off colorful, sweet, and easy for the first 10 or so minutes, just like this game, and then they would graduate into some kind of hellish torture for the remainder of your playtime. Slowly getting harder and harder. And Foxy Land 2 is great at that. Foxy Land 2 is absolutely trial and error based, the second world onward. And you might be sitting there going, wow, all of these things you're saying about this game sound awful. And normally I wouldn't be interested in playing this kind of game. But it actually does what it tried to do. And I kind of found that novel in itself. Because so many other games that try to do what Foxy Land 2 does just don't. Because other games that try to be retro actually are fair most of the time. And when they're unfair, they're unfair in a way that eases the player into it or adds a comedic spin. But Foxy Land 2, it, it just gets really obscenely, ass-grindingly difficult. And it's still colorful and cheerful the whole time, without a hint of irony. It doesn't do what most difficult modern games do and acknowledge that it's really difficult, or put some sort of humorous spin on your suffering. It's just, it just smiles. It just smiles and acts like it's torturing you for completely normal, normal reasons. Like, this is just an everyday video game. And that's what SNES games were like. That's what Super Nintendo and Genesis platformers were like. They didn't laugh at you because they were so difficult that you couldn't complete them. They just stared at you like this was a normal, healthy thing to be doing and expected you to beat them anyway. And that's what Foxy Land 2 does. Foxy Land 2 does not look at you being abused and laugh at you and go, Haha, look how abused you are. It abuses you and then it looks at you with a straight face and says, Are you going to keep playing this cute colorful fox game or what? 
And the reason I'm showing you the earlier levels instead of the later levels is because, you know, I feel like the later levels and their bullshit is something that anyone interested in this should have to experience themselves. Because it's not like a massacre platformer or anything, it's just deliberately designed to be annoying. My dedication to finish this game is only paralleled by the developer's dedication to actually fulfill on their desire to make a game inspired by 16-bit platformers. You know, the time I spent mastering this game, I could have spent it playing Mick and Mac Global Gladiators or Plock or some other really difficult 2D platformer like that Crash Test Dummies one on the Super Nintendo or something. But I spent it on Foxy Land 2. Because Foxy Land 2 stands out for being exactly as annoying as the old games it wants to be like. And for that reason, I really can't recommend it highly enough. It's just so genuine, so pure in what it wants to do the whole time. There's no tricks up its sleeve, it just is what it wants to be the whole time. Alright, let's skip ahead to the first boss and then we'll end the video after that. 